Hey, it's Joe Vines from The Automator. And uh, in this next clip, um, we were having a call with a, a friend of mine in Italy, Alessandro, who was programming auto hotkey. And he, he's writing this really cool, uh, like, it's not really language translation, but part of its uh, functionality had languages built into it. And earlier in the, the call, we had seen how he was hard coding, like, each language. And Isaiah had a, a point of, hey, if we nested this in a certain way, you could have, it would be dynamic. Like, very be easy, very easy to add other languages, additional languages, if you built it in a different way. And so, um, we're just going to jump in here where we're already discussing this. So, sorry about that. But uh, I just hit record, and we, we and I'm like, hey, this is some good stuff. Like, let's share this. Uh, and then, by the way, at the end, um, it's going to just kind of stop. And that's because we actually went into some stuff that uh, we can't share. So there's not going to be a, an actual end to that. But um, I hope you find this interesting. I think it was an interesting way to think about how you store your objects and data and planning in the future of what you're going to do with it. So it's a really good discussion. Cheers. That is an array. That then you can go ahead and add more languages to it, right? OK, yeah. So now this array, you can use it for matching it to another object which is the translation. Or now what, what um, and this is, this is part of what is called localization, right? So in localization, what you usually do is that you say localize and this localization thing has the, um, the translation for a specific variable, let's say, um, text one, that's a variable in your program. Okay. And that variable, it's gonna have the Japanese version or well, the English version, this box is like this, but it also has, and that's for the English version of it, um, localize and then you have text one but in Italian as well, okay? Now, here's the deal. Depending on the position where they are, they're gonna match to the other languages thing. So it is kind of like you build, a, I'm giving a very bad example here, but what I'm trying to do is you have an object that has each localization in each language in the same order of this array. So in English would be blue, in Italian would be azul, I don't know how it is. Blue, 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 but without the E in the end. And okay. then, for example, in Spanish would be azul. So this would be Spanish. So you would have kind of like an object for a specific text on your, on your program, a variable. So for example, if you have a GUI that has a text on it, Okay, yeah. So you see the, the, the variable for that GUI, let's say that the variable is text one. Okay. And you would have for that variable, you would have each translation in an array that match in the same order of the languages that you have. So, so can I ask you a question? Yeah, go ahead. So why would you rely on, uh, on positioning in that instance uh, instead of... Uh, of key, the name key, like key value yeah pairs. you can do that too you okay. can do that too of course now the, the reason for for it to be like that i would actually it would actually allow me to add a new language right away so oh. as i'm uh, the languages on your program don't change very often okay, so you yeah. just have english and italian now as, as you just have english and italian you just have these two things right yeah. And for each part of your program, you have the translations like this. Uh, exactly. Yeah. Red would be so in, in rose. Italian rose like well, maybe with, like that. with two with two two S and our, our O in the end. Okay. Yeah. There you go. So for each part of your program, you would have a translation like this. And actually, even this part, you give it to a translator. So you want to translate it to Spanish now. Yeah. You give this part to a Spanish guy who sees the English word there and he just says, okay, well, that would be a sur. Okay. And this would be uh, rojo. And now in your program, you just have to add a new 
language, Spanish. Oh, see how cool. quick you see how quick it is. So that's the reason why I would go with position in this case because it's just simply uh, you just have the position of the of the language and the, and it, that is not going to change very often. It's something that is going to be always the same place. Okay. But, okay. Uh, on let's say you didn't have blue for Italian, you would have to make sure you leave the space for the it blank like like that. So okay. you don't have blue. So I have blue is empty and you have a soul because that's the last. So you would have that empty there, right? Because yeah, the positioning like is very, very, very. So that's one way of doing it. Of course, there are many ways of doing the same thing, but this is one that in your case works especially well because you just have two languages, right? Isaiah, so on, the, on three and four, wouldn't you, those be arrays instead of an, an object? Yeah, you can make them arrays. So, um, I know you. In were... the end, even if you if you don't put the, the the thing, it gets converted to an array anyways. But yeah, you can put this like this to make it more consistent. So I'm just using up, uh, arrays here everywhere. That's okay. So how how uh, can you demonstrate how would you call it? Yeah, I would say like if if uh, well text. So here I would say, uh, let's say the uh, language is uh, lang Spanish. Yeah. Equals so three. Then I'm gonna put. I, I just pass the language value okay. of it. So if the language is so the language is Spanish, right? So I just yeah. want the Spanish language. Um, I could just do the following. Let me see something. And let me just one second. Hold on. Okay, so what I want to pass is just what language it is, and yes. it's just gonna give me the, the positioning on it. Um, usually, so for example, for my, what I want to do is just, if I say English, I want to return what number it is. I remember that I could do that by just simply saying languages, so this is where this might be actually yeah. needed because I need the ID of it, right? So I just need the ID of each of them. Yeah, I, I would have right. done something like that. Right, so this is my language and let's just, instead of languages, just put lang and I would just pass lang uh, Spanish. So that would be Spanish. Yeah. Right. So this would actually just go ahead and return number three in there. And what I would have is probably um, the settings. If settings language equals English, for example, mm -hmm. then just English. And actually, in that case, I could have the settings language directly mapped into this guy here. Yeah, in, in, yeah, I thought that. And that, if you have the settings language set to English, the language set to English is going to return the position of it, and that position is going to be the one that is going to be returned here. Yeah. Now, if you have it set it up to Spanish, it's going to return the position three that is going to be shown on the last part of it. So you, you, you're kind of understanding. And this, you can have in a different file that is not on your main script so that it doesn't clutter everything. So you have your translation somewhere. Yeah, inside and you just maybe. include, and then you just yeah. include the file, right? It is, th that's a better approach because then it allows you to add now, well, Russian is gonna be four. Yeah. Right? So now Russian is four. Now I know that now I just need to add the Russian language here. That's it, mm -hmm. you see? Yeah. So it allows me to add new languages very quickly. And you don't have to go into, which those are now in a different file, right? So right, you're in a different file, so you don't have to modify your... Yeah, document. yeah, that's, that's a big, a, quite a big advantage. Right, right, and then, and then as it is in a different file, you can have translators and you just send that file to them. Right. Right, so you just, here, just add the column for that one, that's it. You see, so those kind of things are um, uh, ways of doing localization in a very small scale. 
This works fine for your program because it's a small program and you don't have many languages. As soon as you have like 20 languages, this method is not a very good idea. Okay, this is okay. not what I would do. Um, not because of the method. The method is going to work very fine. I'm talking about the translation of it because then the translation is not a very good idea to have it as an object like this, but rather have it as um, a tab separated file, like with tabs like this, tab delimited, mm. so that it could be opened in a different uh, kind of program like Excel or many translator programs. And then okay. I just know which, which column is what, and it's a little bit easier. Yeah. But for what you're doing, this, this is perfectly fine. And it allows you to scale up to 10 languages very easily, you know? Yeah, the, 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 the only thing that uh, I'm thinking could be, could be getting a little bit confusing if you have a lot of GUI, GUIs, Elements? what text is related to what GUI and what control could be? That's, no, so that's, that's part of it. It is just something that, that's the reason why you have to name your variables correctly. Because yeah. text one makes no sense. But if I say here, my variable is something like um, so verb, uh, adjectives GUI. Yeah. I know that that's the, the part on my GUI that has the adjectives and it would be easy for me to spot where it is. You see what I mean? Yeah. But so, like in this case to me, I, I would still say, hey, you're programming in what language? Like if it's, you know, if you're programming in Spanish, I would just use Rojo on the left, right? Um, it, the key can be whatever you want, right? It could be blue. Oh, okay. So the key here can be Spanish. Is what you say? No, sorry. It could be it could be Rojo, or it could be blue, or Azul. It's whatever language you're used to is the key. There's no reason, and, and maybe I'm missing it, not mm -hmm. to use an actual word that's in your array. Yeah, you can you can use you can use whatever you want here. So yeah, it makes sense. So, so point. yeah, so 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 for this one. Rojo equals blue, so, so azul right. equals blue and blue, sorry. I could have it like this. No, I, I would leave it, leave it in. No, because you don't, I mean, personally, I, I would probably just leave it in there, right? Okay, you would just leave it in the, in the native language. Right. You have your, and that's the translation for that word. Right. Ah, okay. In different now, languages. Now we, now we understand what you are saying. Otherwise, you're like, what the hell does text one mean in this case? Like, what am I using it, right? Uh, right, yeah. It's for you, right? Whoever's programming. Now, right, whatever. so this, this part is just internal. You can put whatever you want there. Right. If it's just... What, what, what I... Yeah, sorry, sorry, Joe, go ahead. No, no, I'm saying if it's just for you doing it, that's when I would say, like, that makes sense. Now, if you're going to be sending it to other programmers around the world... That's not oh, a good yeah. <laughs> Right, right, exactly. But but in general, yes, you can. It's not what, a what problem. I, so what? Sorry, sorry, Isaiah. Uh, go right, on. Go ahead. No, go ahead. No, what I was uh, thinking uh, is that what I would try to do is to uh, dynamically call the element, giving right. it uh, the name of the GUI and the name of the control, maybe. For example, um, this this variable name here, it's actually you do whatever is best for you. Okay. Um, whatever makes sense to you. And whatever, when you put it in the context of the program, is going to work for you. Yeah. There is no, there is no rule to this. Um, I, I, myself, personally, would put the name of the variable that I'm going to be using at the GUI. Okay? I could do that. It's not a problem. Um, but in any other case, you could use whatever you want. It's not, it's not like uh, mandatory to do anything. It's just an idea of how you would translate. And I could actually just test it. So right here, if I do a message box, I should get the word in that. But if I change it to Spanish, that should give me the word azul. You see, so yeah. it is kind of like a very simple way of me creating this um, this uh, 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 way of translating things yeah, it's dynamic. Like, yeah. And then allowing me to add stuff and remove stuff easily. 
if they're in a different file, then it allows you to share it easily. So those kind of things, those, those are um, what it calls, uh, what is called localization. You, you do the localization for, yeah. for software uh, and yeah, it makes your life easier, man. <laughs> if you don't do it this way, it's gonna be a nightmare. Isaiah, when you're saying localization, um, is, is that coming from, I, I know the different versions of Windows, you know, you can look at your localization. I mean, is that what you're referring to is the actual, because this is a translation thing, or is that a programming term? No, 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 that, that's actually a, a translator's term. Oh, thank you. There's so somebody who is translating would use the term localization to refer to translate a program. Yeah, okay. I want to make sure. So that's, that's what they're doing, that's what it means. Um, but, you know what, Joe, you don't know, but I have worked in so many areas in my life. It's funny. So I was a translator for a long time. Uh, so, 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 yeah, in translation, then there's a special area, and this is kind of like a specialty of translating programs, and they have their own ways of doing it. The way, um, you know, who might give him a little bit of ideas as well? Um, uh, John. John Lalonde, he has his, his script localized in several ways, right? He has different languages and he has his own method of localizing the, 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 the GUI, which you might take a look at. It might, be, it might work for you. It's not this one that I showed you. What I just showed you is kind of like with objects. He's not using objects, he's doing something else. So you could take a look at that and see it because in your case, you are gonna deal with that at some point, right? Now you started with Italian and English, but if people really like it, somebody's gonna ask you, okay, don't you have this in Spanish? Come on, <laughs> come on, I want Spanish. And you say like, man, it's free, I, I have no time for that. <laughs> you know, and they're gonna be like, this sucks, your program sucks, nobody should use this. And I'm like, come on. At some point, I know from talking to Jean, years ago when he first started working, it's been around for quite a while, right? Quick, I yeah. Starting off with something else, but a couple of years ago, he started. He had to redo. He redid everything using classes and made it where maintaining it is so much easier. But you know, when he first built it, to your point, Isaiah, that wasn't like on the radar necessarily. No, so he, he didn't want to do it, it, right? He didn't, he didn't have that. <laughs> yeah. He said, you know, like, you know what? This is just unmaintainable. I have to do it, like, yeah. right? Yeah. So, so I have to do it. So he's good. If you start it right now and you have the option already that you have in Italian and English, then make it so that you could add more languages later. Because yeah. what is going to happen is that at some point, somebody's going to ask you. And when people start asking, it's going to be a nightmare for you to change your whole program just to make sure that you could localize it, right? And here's where I would come in as like a business person and say, okay, you know what? Maybe leave it as is for two languages. However, right. When you go to adding a third, that's when you're like, you know what? Because I have it right. done. It works great. But right, exactly. You know, Don't but, change everything now, right? <laughs> right. Because until you see, like, there's actually demand, right? Like, if right. It, suddenly there's true. demand and it looks like it's going to be something that really is going to, you know, be worth your time. Then, then you know, before you have eight of them, right? Like, it's just the next step. Like, hey, let's, let's do a little work to make it smarter and easier. <laughs> and then after the eighth one, nobody asks you for any, any other language. So you rewrite everything and then nobody asks you for a new language. It's very annoying. Which is yeah. another good point of like, if you can foresee at some point, I'm going to make this, might as well take advantage. It's like here in our house, you know, I'm like, we plan to die here. Like, you know, not, not immediately, but I'm, um, you know, at some point. <laughs> right, like, <laughs> not right now. <laughs> insulation now, because why would I wait 20 years and then decide to add more insulation? You know what I mean? Take advantage of it now. Like, you know what I mean? And don't do it at the end. You'll be kicked in yourself. Yeah. I think it's the same idea of the variables. You set the variable name very clearly now so that later you can read it. Yeah. Right now, if I already saw that I have two languages, make that easy for you to modify because we don't know what is gonna happen two years from now. You can, you can sell this program for a lot and you're gonna have more programmers helping you out with new features and stuff. But now we have to rewrite the whole thing just because uh, two years ago you didn't add this little thing. So those kind of things you never know. So in my case, personally, whenever I start a project, 
I don't start the project thinking about what is easy right now. I usually start with something that I could say like, okay, I could change the languages. I could change the settings very easily. I could add new modules. I could add new things. Okay, we can start with that. Now, I am learning right now with Joe. Sometimes for business, that's not the best approach. For business, you need something that is working right now. And it doesn't matter how it works. So long as it is working right now, that's okay. But for a personal project, I would just make it work. If you have the time, just do it in a way that it, it, later on is going to be better for you. You know, I didn't chime in on it earlier, but you, you mentioned sometimes you purposely make things really hard for yourself because you have this idea and you want to, and, and all, I, what I didn't say then was that's actually really good. Right, it to is. force yourself to try different things. It's it's one of the things that um, I was watching a video the other day talking about how we, we need to keep learning and growing. And if you keep doing the same things the same way, you never come up with these other things. And and this is why also like us we were all talking this morning, right? It was like it's you you start learning other things and think when you when you hear how other people are doing stuff, right? And you go, oh, you know, wow, okay, all right. I, Actually, again, I have never seen this use of the object like that. You you declared it and use it right there. Yeah. Right. I have never yeah, seen I, that. I, I thought about it, and it it was quite cool in that instance. But what you pointed out is actually true. If the, if the languages are more, it would be better to have it elsewhere. Right. In your case, what you would have to do, for example, if you want to add something else, you would have to go line by line wherever you had that. And that could be in different places on your script, right? Yeah. So the what, base... I, what, what, I, what I'm thinking is maybe I could call the, uh, directly in the GUI, call it from maybe a database the in the language I want. And yeah, the, that's another, the, that's another yeah. method, right? Of course, that's another method. So you just select what language you're using, English. And there's a table called English translations, which you can grab all the translations from there. That's yeah. another solution, right? That one is the one that I would actually suggest for something that is a, big, a very big program. Like if you have 20 languages, that's the best solution, right? Because yeah. it, it, it is actually scalable and it's very fast. But yeah. as I mentioned before, for what you're doing is just two languages. Yeah. You already have the objects. You just have to copy paste them in another, in another place and just include them. So you don't have to change much, right? Okay. In your yeah. case for such a small project, yeah, that's the best solution. It's okay. And yeah. I, I'm gonna thank Joe because actually, again, if you didn't say like, stay here, it's okay. I wouldn't have noticed that, right? So I, I wouldn't have yeah. seen that. And it is good to talk to other programmers. You see other things that you have never seen. Not because you don't know, it's just because you don't do that very often. I don't use objects for that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't use objects for that thing. Yeah, and and yeah. this just reaffirmed, I, Isaiah and I had talked about, I had planned, and I was talking to someone about it. Oh yeah, Ryan Wells yesterday. Um, having regularly scheduled, like, you know, every Tuesday or whatever it is at like this block of time, we'll get on do like a live Facebook or YouTube feed and be like, hey, bring your code and we're gonna discuss, you know, and as long right. as you've got somewhat of a thick skin, right? Cause some people will get offended, right? But, you know, but get some feedback from other, and here's the thing is Isaiah's is amazing, like I said, but just sometime, it doesn't even matter if the other person's quote unquote better than you or not. It's just having people say, did you yeah. think about doing it this way, right? And you go, wow, like I said, this is how I've jumped in like how I do stuff because Expo getting exposed to other people, especially though, in this case, Alessandro, this was your code, right? And when people start giving you tips and talking through things on your own code, it's so much easier to understand because you understand what you're trying to do and what's going on. When you try to right. read someone else's thing and see how they're using the approach, but you're not familiar <laughs> with it, it's, yeah, it's just so much harder. Yeah, it's different, right? Yeah, that's, that's, that's quite quite a good point. Yeah, it is. Actually, I have never thought about that. Like, if it is my code, I know what I'm trying to do. And somebody tells me, like, yeah, just add a little thing so that they know that it's, oh, I know how to do that. Yeah. But if it is somebody else and I don't understand what he's trying to do and I don't know what his goal is, and then he says, well, but I add this. And I'm like, right. 
Yeah, what you, does that mean? <laughs> right, because it's not going to help unless you really, you know, end up applying it. You don't see it directly going to help you, you know, like it's, no. but when you, when you see it on your own stuff, man, it's so much easier to both digest and you actually stick with it more. Now, I know from working with Isaiah for a while, like I give him total leeway on whatever. I'm like, I'm not going to tell him, no, don't, don't show me that new approach, right? Like I, I, I know it's going to lead, you know, it's a good point he's going to make, but um, some stuff you read in the forum, like, you know, you're like, whatever, like, you know what I mean? It's like, I'm, I'm not going to try to figure out what they did here. <laughs> no, but when you're speaking, it's a little bit easier. In your case, you know what? The reason why I, for example, uh, to give you an example of why in your case, I said something specific is like, you have your GUI, you clicked on something, nothing happened, right? Now, usually in my case, and in most of the programs that I do for Joe, what we use is a status, a, a status bar. Have you seen yeah. the status bars, right? Yeah. Now, in your case, I wouldn't suggest you using a status bar because I know that in your case, um, the people who are going to be using it usually need something more visual, oh, right? Yeah. So then a status, a status, you're talking about people who have problems speaking and now you're going to put a status bar with text? No, don't do that. Actually put an image, something like a, an AVI yeah. GIF or something that is kind of like, I'm doing something. There are no right answers. You can do the same thing in different ways. The same thing. And the same thing that I told you is what I would do in a program with Joe, but I wouldn't do it with an image because okay. the people who will, will be talk, using that, they, they don't like a lot of images and stuff. They just need text, right? Yeah. So I just put a status bar in there. You see, so those kind of things help you get new ideas in different situations, right? Yeah. And it's cool, you know? Yeah, that, that's quite true. Now, so there's not always the best situation, but there could be the best situation for the situation you're in. Right, <laughs> Something for like the that. circumstance. Yeah, for the, uh, the circumstance. Even then, I would say it still depends. It depends on your skill level, your preference. You know, who's going to use the thing after? Are you going to maintain the code? I mean, there's so many things of like why you would choose between one or another on how you go solve something, right? Um, I actually just added the, Isaiah, that was a great point. Was like, remember the other day I asked you about the things I wish I knew when I started programming? Like that, <laughs> yeah. There's no right way, right? There, <laughs> there is no right way. There's a dozen different ways to do stuff in. It's, it's really, you know, they all often work, but some of them just might be more ideal for you. Like, you know, like if, if I get something from Lexicos and I can't even understand it, yet I'm going to have to later be able to edit it. Like that's, that's probably not a smart thing for me to do, right? Like, because I can't even... And, and his code is the best. He's the one who wrote the language, right? So, so he knows. He knows what yeah. he's doing and he's going to give you the best answer. Well, you know, the other day... we As a programmer. Yesterday, we worked through that recursion looping, and we had the two, you came up with two different solutions for it, right? And at the end, I'm like, hey, can we go back to this other one? Because for me, it just made more sense. And I'm going to be the one that's going to apply it on my other stuff. And I'm like, you know, yeah, they both work, but that one to me was just... So that was the one with the until at the end, right? Yeah, that's right, yeah. So, yeah. so that was a look like... So I don't know if you have done this, um, and it was something like this, like... Um, you have a loop that is an infinite loop, and then you have this, this condition, if not a variable, then break. break. Yeah, okay. That's something that many people do, right? Yes. I don't like it. I really don't like it because it's an infinite loop. And what happens is that at some point, the variable might never be empty, for example. So and what, I, what, what would you do? Would you do or uh, but this is the thing. Uh, majority? You, now, in our case, what we were looking for, it was something like, okay, we have some code that we want to execute very often and then break. But he didn't like this, this line here because he was going to forget about it later or he wouldn't understand how to do it. But there was this thing that you can actually add here that says until. Oh, yeah. Not bar. Right, so it is going to loop all this until that is not true, and it's going to loop at least once, which is something that we needed in our case right. because the first time the variable was going to be empty. Right. 
So you oh. see, so the variable starts empty, then it gets some data and then it gets empty again. So in this case, this is a very specific solution. This is a loop that runs at least once before it checks for the, for the, for the, and that makes all the difference. And it is easy to understand because you're going to loop until something happens. Yeah. It so is that, very that, easy to understand. That's cool that you told me that, but because I think that the while loop, oh, they consider Jesus. the variables at the beginning of the loop. Yep. Like while var. That's where we started. And then we realized that that wasn't. Yeah, good. that's where we started. And then we said like, well, we cannot consider that because the first time is going to be empty. So it's not going to run. We could have set a stupid value before it, right? That's what I'm Right. Thinking. You could, you could put a, a value like var equals yeah. one, but then that would make your, <laughs> it, it might make it so that you enter an infinite loop. If inside the code, the variable is not emptied. Yeah. Say for example, we're making calls to an API. Yeah. So if the API call fails, and the variable doesn't get emptied, your while loop is going to be an infinite loop. And that's a problem because you don't see anything happening and you think that the script is working, but that's why I hate the, the infinite loops like this. I don't <laughs> like that. Right. Yeah. So I don't like them. Now, what we did would was you, this. Isaiah, would you consider putting in uh, uh, like a, uh, a security exit? Like if I index is, uh, uh, yeah. More than 1,000 okay. exit. 